tutorial sheet too. Question number two. We can see this is a projectile motion problem. Then I prefer to use approach one, which is a fixed coordinate Cartesian coordinate system. This is the positive direction for X and Y components. And if I want to redraw the problem here, this is my X direction, positive direction. This is the original position of particle. I put the coordinate system on the original position of particle and this is the path of motion for the projectile. The initial velocity of particle is called U, therefore it has two components. Okay, I call this angle theta 1 and this angle theta 2. You can see theta is nothing more than theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay, the horizontal component of velocity at initial point is equal to u. I just look at the magnitude, cosine theta 1, and this is, we, you can call it ux. And the vertical components, again, if we just look at the magnitude, it's u sine theta 1. We can call it u y as well. Okay, similar to any other projectile motion problem, I divide my motion in two directions. First, I look at the movement in y direction. between two points. If I call the initial position A, the point that the projectile gets its highest altitude, it's called B, where the velocity of the projectile is zero. We had similar example in the lecture. And here we call C. Here I look at the movement in y direction for the projectile between A and B. Then I know in y direction, similar to any other projectile problem, it's my acceleration is minus g. If we ignore the air resistance, we don't have any acceleration in x direction. G is downward, and we assume the upward be positive, and that's why we put minus sign here. Okay. For constant, this is a constant acceleration problem. For constant acceleration problem, Vy at point B 
it's equal to vy at point A equals to 2 acceleration in y direction y b minus y a y b is given by the problem it's thirty two meter no sorry it's twelve meter yes twelve meter this is point B this is Y B the position the vertical position of point B with respect to origin of the chosen coordinate system twelve Y A is zero because we chose the origin of the coordinate system at the initial point of the particle ay is minus 9.81 the vy it's uy and we know v at point b is equal to 0 From this relationship, we can easily calculate the vertical component of the initial velocity. It's equal to 2 multiply 9.81 multiplied by 12, which is equal to 1534 meter per second. Okay. For second part, again I look at the movements in the y direction. But this time between initial point and final position of particle between A and C we can see A point A and point C this is a constant acceleration problem YC is equal to YA plus the initial velocity at point A in vertical direction multiplied by the time takes between points and A and C plus acceleration in Y direction which is minus 0.81 the square of time between A and C okay this one we have initial velocity of particle uy we calculated in previous step is 15 34 this is 0 this is minus 30 why yc is minus 30 okay because you can see we have here if I just 3 4 then this is 5 this length is given 50 therefore the horizontal coordinate of point C with respect to X is positive plus 40 we need just multiply this one by 10 you will have bigger triangle which is this triangle it's 30 40 
50, 50 and 50. And this one is 30, but this is the Y component is below the origin or in the negative side of the Y axis, minus 30. Then that's why we put here y is equal to y30. Here everything is known. The only unknown we have is time. If you solve it, you have only one positive answer. And we know the time is always positive. This is the total time of the process. Finally, because so far we just looked at the movement in y direction. Now if we look at the movement in x direction, between initial point and final point the acceleration is zero then we can use the constant acceleration formulation xc is equal to xa plus initial position sorry initial velocity in x direction which we called it ux multiplied by T A C plus one over two A X T A C and we know A X is equal to zero because there is no force in X direction. Okay, X A is equal to zero, X C is equal to plus forty. You can see x component of c with respect to origin of coordinate system is plus 40. Then everything we know we need just to calculate the t, this is the linear equation. No, sorry. No, 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 no. We don't know ux but we know the t. The t already we calculated in the previous step. If you just replace it here, we can easily calculate ux from the linear equation. 8.91 meter per second. Now, if I want to summarize, what we worked out so far, We have ux, which is equal to 8.91 meter per second. We have uy, which is 15, 34 meter per second. We calculated in the first step. From these two, I can calculate the magnitude of the initial velocity vector or initial speed. If you replace these two values, it gives you approximately 17.74 meter per second. And also for the initial angle, if you look at the, this one, this angle is theta 1, yes? This is ux, this is uy.
this is ux, this is uy, this is the total initial velocity and this is theta 1 and the length of this side is uy the length of this which is nothing more than the length of vector uy and this is the length of this side is nothing more than the length of vector u, ux we can see easily tangent theta 1 is equal to uy over ux if we replace the values which we calculated in the previous steps it gives theta 1 equals to 59.86 degree and also you can see if we consider this rectangle this is theta 2 this is 30, the length, this is 40, the length, yes, then the tangent theta 2 equals to 30 over 40, yes, the opposite side over adjacent side, tangent theta 2 is equal to the over 4 then theta 2 is 36.87 degree and we know that theta is nothing more than theta 1 plus theta 2 the combination of these two angles gives the angle theta if we replace their values it would be 96.7 degrees.